want to have a legend like Vincent Enyama, someone okay. that has, has been at the World Cup yeah. three good times. The boss. Olga. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be with you guys. Yeah, good afternoon, Vincent Enyama. It's, 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 How it's, are you good. guys doing? Very well, very well. How are you doing over there? Yeah, I'm good. I'm okay. Life is How's okay. Life is beautiful. Yeah. How's the lockdown there? Oh, you don't want to know. Yeah. Lockdown here, it's um, it's it's strict. It's really crazy. You know, France is one of those places that um, the virus really hit. It's so um, the 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 restriction, the stuff, the rules, the the other the other thing about the lockdown is really strict. You 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 only go out with um attestation. You, you you don't just go out. If you don't have a reason to go out, you don't go out. There are about four or five reasons you can go out of your house. One to buy things, two to go to the clinic, hmm. three to I think make sport and um and all is within one hour. You can stay out more than one hour. Wow. And um, the lockdown is still um, we're still on the lockdown, and uh, it's just gonna be still till um, 11th May. So, okay. so it's hard here. It's tough. Okay, um, Vincent, can let's um quickly talk about what is going on in the football. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yes, uh, the, the football league. Both football leagues have been suspended, and that is due to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, what's your take on this? Do you think that um, the leagues should be cancelled, or do you think that football action should actually resume in some parts of the world? Um, uh, for me, it's just my opinion. I mean, I'm entitled to it. I think um, uh, the league should be cancelled, because um, if COVID is real, if um, it's not a scam, then it's real. Mm -hmm. Then if it is real, then it's risky. We're talking about um, social distance in sporting. I mean, not recreational sporting because recreational sporting like tennis, you don't bother about social distance. Mm -hmm. uh, like golf, you don't worry about that. But football, I think it's got a, it's a they say football is a game of contact. You know, so so I think it should be cancelled. But now you you it, it's a whole lot of things because it, there are clubs that would have gotten the opportunity to win the league. There are clubs that would have gotten the opportunity um to escape relegation or qualify for something if the if the league continued and and, um, and they wouldn't have that opportunity anymore. You know, I was reading the other day how Lyon wants to sue the French um, uh, Federation for, for that. For me, the league should be cancelled. But then that re remains my opinion. I mean, I respect that. Um, now, let's talk about you in person. Uh, we know you had a career that lasted for 13 years, which is very incredible. Um, but would like to know, how did it all start for you? Um, how did my career as a soccer player or my career as a, a national team player? No, as, as a footballer, as a soccer player, how did it start? Oh, um, my career as a soccer player spanned more than 13 years. Um, I okay. mean, yeah, I started way back when I just finished my secondary school. That is when I started my professional career. I was so lucky. I mean, I got into to a club that gave me that opportunity. And and I I just seized it. I seized it as a pro, as a professional player. I started with the Boom Stars as a a footballer. I started right from when I was a baby, a little boy. Yeah, I'm a little boy of five six. I I was so 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 used to the ball. Luckily, my father then he was working as a coach. He retired as a football coach and um of the University of Rio then Unicross. Um, so uh. I was lucky to be born into that family, so I think football runs in my blood. Now I think football for me is kind of hereditary because my dad was very good, he was a very good defender. He played for the he represented Nigeria in his own time. I mean, there were he wasn't reckoned better. 
for me, that's how it started. I used to jump on the field. I just I used to jump on the street. The, the, I mean, then we didn't have a lot of third roads now like it is now. So I could take the ball, fall on the ground while going to school or while coming back from school. I'll come back home with my school uniform all dated and stuff like that. So it was that. It started that way. And I I grew in love with the, with the round thing called ball. I grew in love with everything called ball. So... I would not stop. Uh, I I would not pass a scene. You know, you come back from school or you come back from fetching water or fetching something, and you see a scene of football. I'll drop that face and kick the ball. Join them in playing, and um, that's how I start. It all started, and I grew. I got into a club. Boom! One thing led the, to the other. I got to Yimba, and boom! The professional side of me started. Okay. Um, personally, let me ask you to have yes. been. So I've been at three World Cups. Okay. You were there in 2002. You were there in 2010. Okay. You were there in 2014. How does this feel personally? Um, so been uh, uh, World playing, World Cup, playing World Cup to me is like icing on the cake. You know, playing World Cup to me is, I mean, for me, it's like the icing on the cake because um, that's the center stage. That's the, the, the highest stage, the podium. You can you nothing more after the World Cup, nothing more. So, being successful in each of them was even a cap, a, you know, a feather added to it. Got the yeah. one of the best saves and 22, 2002, got to man of the match award in twenty ten. Got the best goalkeeper award group stage in twenty fourteen. I mean, it's um something you you can't reckon with. You can you can you can't talk about. You just lack words to express, you know, globally how you feel. The, the, that feeling pass, that that word alone says feeling. You you don't have what to qualify it. So that's how I feel. I feel um, complete. I feel satisfied. I feel like I've I've done it all for the for the club for the country. I feel like oh, it's okay. I did it. You know, I have achieved that. Okay, um, I was asking also that I want to ask you one. One, um, it's a personal question anyway, but no, I know this. You no, know, Wala. <laughs> okay, Messi played. You played against Messi. No goal. Okay. But somehow, point fourteen. If I had to see the highlights again, uh -huh. to imagine had lots of incredible saves. That's what I would call it, incredible saves. But somehow, that guy had put to pass you, especially the the second one, which was a free kick. Yeah. I think there was a time you you were proud that Messi, yes, that's my father, he had played against you once or twice. He didn't score. But after that match, what were what did you think? What what came into you that Messi eventually got two goals past you? No, I sincerely speaking, when I play football, I don't care who's on the field, who's in front of me. I I tell you the truth, I won't even remember that Messi was in that game. You know, I'm like this. I work so much that I'm, once I'm on the pitch, all I see is the ball. I don't see nobody. I don't see if you be Maradona, if you be Pele. I don't see, I don't know if you're, in, you're existing. Really, that's me. That's the way I've tuned, fine-tuned my mind, my mindset for a game. So um, when he scored, I mean, first goal was kind of a lucky goal. Lucky. Except I had anticipated earlier that then the zone was a zone you can't anticipate. He had a free kick in a zone that was red zone. You don't concede free kicks there, but then that happened and um, and we we considered from there. I mean, it's the same zone. But Beckham shoots his free kick, you know, same spot, but on the other side. So when you get free kicks, there, it's more or less like for very good free kick takers, it's a more or less like a penalty. So I was happy he scored. He was happy he scored. The whole world was happy that he scored because, I mean, that competition, the group stage was profiled as Messi and, and Vincent. That, I mean, the, the pre-match analysis, pre-match meeting, pre-match press briefing, I was everything Vincent, Messi. Vincent, Messi. So the whole world, everyone wanted him to break because I think I was the only goalkeeper I didn't score against. So as at that time, everybody wanted him to score against me. So that is okay. how it is. Well, we, you, you recently posted a picture of you and Messi having a chat where you guys laughed. And you said Omeru 
on Nazi and some other the, what were they looking at? What were you what were you and Messi talking about in that picture? My brother, I don't know. We know talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you can't remember. my brother truth truth i don't know what he was speaking spanish i was speaking english he was speaking spanish i was speaking english <laughs> imagine you know but the, 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 the truth about that picture is all you need to see in that picture is respect hmm. you know respect you know if you like you being a journalist you see another journalist that is really very good that's what it was Best world best player, seeing world best goalkeepers at that time. What else? Respect, respect. Just all about respect. Okay, um, let's talk more about you now. Um, we know you've come up against many tough opponents, but who would you say was your toughest opponent? Um, toughest opponent that I don't have. I've been the very, I've been the high point of every match, the highlight of every match. The teams. Teams do match preparation based on, oh, how do we score Vincent? How do we score Vincent? That's really the truth. So having a tough player against me, no, I think it's, I've not really had that. I've, 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 if you see my statistics, I don't believe in him. In statistics, I made about, um, for the national team, I make almost 60%, 50% clean sheets. That means I was stronger than my opponents. And um, in Lille also, I made them 140, 140-something uh, games. I made almost 70% clean sheets. That shows that I was very strong. You know, so I bet Edison Cavani has scored um, a couple of times against me. And um, like I said, I think these are the two people that have really scored against me. I scored once. Yeah, he made a hard trick. But apart from these two guys, um. It's rather been a Vincent, Vincent, Vincent. Okay, Vincent, let's talk about your time in France. Um, you had a very incredible record. You went 11 games, if, if my memory serves me well, you went 11 games without conceding. You were this close to breaking the record. Um, when you conceded eventually, I guess the game was against Bordeaux, if I'm not mistaken. When you conceded in that match, how did you feel not breaking that record? I felt bad. In the match, I didn't, I mean, it's part of the game. But looking back at it, I feel bad because, I mean, we were just this close to breaking that record. It was not just about, me. okay, fine, the credit goes to who is in the goal, but it was um, that defense. We had a consistency in that team, that period, that um, I feel bad for us in that team not having the record now, you know. But then it's just, it was just a game. Everybody really, really, a lot of people in France wanted me to lose the record because the record is being held in France by a French guy. Okay. You know, so a lot of people really wanted me to lose the record. If you see the joy in the stadium, the joy, the praise, the, the news, it was, oh, come on, Vincent shouldn't break this record, you know. But then it's still part of what life is about joy, 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 fun, fun, fun. You live and you keep going. But I'm not happy about the record. I didn't break, but then now, looking back at it now, but then it was just a game. You know, it's nothing special. Nothing special. Records are for people that write books, not before us. We play Ami <laughs> Waka. <laughs> um, joins Moscap footballer for the Super Eagles. This I is am another... not joined Moscap. I think they need to change that thing in there. I have seen a lot of things. People say, um, Yobo did 100. I did 101. So I think um I think it's a mistake somewhere. Mm, probably whosoever wrote. I'm not joined to Moscow. Okay, now let's come to the super egos. So correct that one before you go back with that notion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, that um Muscat, um Vincent Yama, mm. it, it's an incredible record. But yeah. we Ahmed Musa is edging. Um, it's, it's really getting to it's getting really close. I guess it's on 91 taps. Um, do you feel your record? Do you feel certain like this? Do you feel your record? No, like I told you, like I told you, records are for people that write books, not for us. I really yeah. don't care. I really want sincerely, Musa is a great guy. I really want him to break. It's not about breaking, I want him to represent Nigeria. It's not about records, like I told you. I don't care. It's just, um, I want him to, to succeed. That's the most important thing. What will he gain if he plays uh, 
150 games and enters every five five minutes. <laughs> no, for real. Let's be real. It's, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. I want him to win. He's a captain now. He's a captain now. I want him to win. I want him to succeed. I want him to excel. I mean, look at what he did. He's been doing recently. The goals he's been scoring, the assists he's been making, his impact in the team. That's what I want for him. I don't yeah. care about it. Let him play. Let him say 200. Let him play 200 and be, and be you know, the Musa we like, the Musa we love. We, people call him governor. We call him governor. This is the Musa we want to see, you know. Since I want him to play 300 matches. What is record for me? No, nothing. It's rubbish. It's for people that keep statistics, not for me. There are calls for you to come back to the national team. The question there, is already there. There are people, like someone is even asking. No, the, the thing is, we know the Super Eagles. The Super Eagles is much more of a property for Nigerians. So yeah. people are talking about it. And there are concerns. People are calling. And I've seen some ex-internationals, even some of your colleagues that, yes. yeah, they have come out to publicly say that. Vincent Inyama is needed. Now we want to ask you, tell us, talk to Nigerians. Should they expect you in the team anytime soon? No, or first if, of all, if you get an invite, would you, are you open to an invite? No, Will you be no, willing? No, I, uh, I, I have always said it. I can never turn my back on Nigeria. I will never say no to Nigeria. This is the truth. But the question is, I mean, Nigeria is so big, such a wonderful country, such a great footballing country. Why should they invite an inactive Vincent Yama that has not played for about a year, a year plus? Why? When there is Akbeye who is playing very well, week in, week out, there is Ezemwa who is playing week in, week out. There is um, Osigwe in, um, in Switzerland. There is um, the new boy coming up in Germany. Um, uh, El Koye. El Koye, yeah. There are so many goal goalies. There's this boy that is we are following in the, um, that is in the local league. He's keeping um uh, clean sheets. He has the best clean sheets in the, um in the in the country. I think he plays. I don't know maybe if he's played to United or something. So why should they invite me? There's Teofilo. 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 What was the name of the guy that plays for Imba? <laughs> I feel okay. Teo hey, there are people all this. They are playing week in, week out. So why should they invite Vincent, for heaven's sake? It, it, Vincent is not fit. Vincent has not been playing. Vincent, I mean, I, I, can, I will never say, if I wake up tomorrow and see, I, he's sweet now to represent Nigeria. At least Musa no go pass the award. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! I knew. 